Good morning, everybody. John Thistle from Newcastle Hearing. This is uh, video three in a three-part series today about the anatomy and physiology of the ear. We've already covered the outer ear, the middle ear. Today, we're going to be covering the basics on the inner ear. And I really have to emphasize that this is a basic uh, explanation of what happens. I'll be producing a video shortly uh, going much greater detail into how the ear functions, which really I, I strongly encourage you to uh, to watch it, even if you otherwise aren't interested in the ear. It is just, it is fascinating. It's mind blowing. So today talking about the cochlea, the inner ear, uh, the inner ear consists of two main components. We have the vestibular portion, which is responsible for balance. We have the cochlea, which is responsible for the hearing, and they're both uh, attached together and they're, they're a part of the same organ. So when we discuss the ear, we're talking about this part right in here, uh, being outer ear, middle ear, now the inner ear. Now, basically, in a nutshell, how it works, running down through the length of the cochlea are a couple different membranes. Now, the embedded within that membrane, uh, one of those membranes, is a, quite a number of hair cells. And so you have, just generally speaking, you have about 30,000 hair cells in a normal functioning cochlea. Uh, now, essentially, each one of those hair cells is specific for is a very specific sound. When sound is pushed down into the cochlea, which is a fluid-filled organ, basically what it results in is the membrane moving with what we call the traveling wave uh, as the fluid swishes back and forth. Now, when that membrane bends and moves, it causes the hair cells to bend. And when the hair cell bends, there's a sharp electric pulse which triggers the nerve and causes a signal to be sent to the brain. Now, once that signal is sent to the brain, that is for a very specific individualized sound. Uh, and then the brain begins to decipher this, uh, this flurry of stimulus and translate into language. Um, so the problem occurs when you have hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss, which is what 90% of people who experience hearing loss is, is that it is the result of hair cell damage within that cochlea. So as the hairs become damaged for a myriad of different reasons, uh, it could be because of uh, overworking them. In the case with noise exposure, you can think of it as you've got one membrane flattening those hair cells against another membrane. You can think of it like blades of grass. Uh, you can walk back and forth on your lawn and it's going to be perfectly fine. You start stomping on it with heavy weight or you just keep walking over and over and over again, and those blades of grass are eventually going to lay down and begin to die. And that's basically what happens with the function of the hair cells in the cochlea. Uh, so in the case with noise-induced hearing loss, or oftentimes uh, various medications can cause hearing loss, genetics, uh, weakened structure of the cells and the cell structure within the inner ear. So when you have that kind of damage, those hair cells are no longer able to transmit the signal to the brain. So that's where we fit the person with hearing aids because the sound is not being heard. So with hearing aids, what the intent is, is to amplify the sound so that the hair cells that are around those ones that are missing can then be stimulated and the brain gets a, um, a, a basic interpretation of, of what the true sound is. And that's why people with hearing aids uh, continue to have difficulty in situations uh, where there's ambient background noise because they lose that fine-tuned ability to be able to distinguish between the different sounds. Uh, so as you can see here, this is a, a very generalized brief summary. Um, so I'll be producing another video shortly. Please watch out for it because it really gives a much greater understanding as to what the limitations are when you do have hearing loss. It allows people to appreciate how much hearing aids actually are able to help and how wonderful the technology is that despite these uh, challenges and restrictions because of the anatomy and within the ear, um, that we're able to provide as much assistance as we are. As always, if you have any questions, any comments, please either you know, leave them in the comment section below, check out my website, www.newcastlehearing.ca, or please give us a phone call, 905-446-4327. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.